ओम शांति इन टूडेज मुरली बाबा इज इन द ब्लेसिंग आस्किंग अस नॉट टू बी माइजरली इन शेयरिंग बाबा ट्रेजर्स एंड बाबा सेज दैट यू नो वेन वी हियर द वर्ड गिविंग sometimes giving is a very loaded word and giving this feeling of giving involves a kind of feeling of sacrifice so you're giving from yourself or giving something that is yours and that's why you know we have this i think we are not able to give generously because of this it's because of this idea this feeling that we have associated with giving and i remember that you know there was this one incident where dadi janki dadi ji and one senior brother were there in a program and in that program toli had to be given to everybody who had attended that program and it was a huge gathering of souls who had come for the first time and there were thousands in number and then dadi and that brother both sat to give toli and then dadi was you know dadi was being dadi and dadi was loveful in her giving of toli and then that senior brother was watching and he was also giving toli but then after some time he asked dadi dadi don't you feel tired don't your hands ache you know when you are constantly for 2 hours 3 hours you're doing this seva so that is said that you know you need to check your attitude for that it's not the pain in the hands but the pain in the attitude so you know if you had to take for 2 hours 3 hours you wouldn't get tired would you yes so if it's about taking then you're not tired but you extend your hand to take also right and you extend your hand to give also but when you're taking it's not tiring when you're giving it's tiring do you get tired receiving love do you ever say i've had enough today too many people were nice to me loveful to me <laughs> you never say that but being loveful to others is quite a task sometimes because it is our attitude associated with giving that makes us heavy and today baba says that baba gives a very interesting uh, piece of knowledge baba says that when you're taking from someone and giving that's not technically giving so baba says you're taking from me and giving all the time so that that doesn't even count as giving <laughs> and i always love this word sharing but you know even sharing is a body conscious word because again you you sharing what is yours but i don't know whether there is a proper word which can really define this act where you're taking from baba and giving and baba says when you do that baba gives a very nice word to describe this it is business and how do you do business you bring from somewhere you give it to someone and you earn in the process 
Yes, so when a businessman is bringing from somewhere and giving somewhere, what is he aware about? He's aware about the income he's earning in the process. So Baba says, I am the ocean of love, peace, happiness. I am the ocean of cooperation, support, power. I am the ocean of everything. And when you are taking from me and giving to others, then what you should hold in your awareness at that time is that I am earning in this process. I am getting benefit. I am earning spiritual currency in the process. I am earning punya in the process. And you know that when you have this attitude, then this business, so when you are aware not of the effort, but of the income. So have you seen businessmen can go to any, if any length to make effort? Yes, why? Because they are not focused on the effort. They are focused on the income vis-a-vis -vis the effort. So they say, itna isai to karna and then so much we will earn. So you know, we have to just do this much and then the earning is huge. That is what keeps them going. So I will also share one thing, something that a brother who is into business shared with me. And he told me that, uh, so when I, uh, I was telling him that Baba says that you should always feel like you're in front of the mirror or you're on the stage. And then you should keep checking, you know, your um, spiritual face and then whether it is loveful or peaceful or the love and peace has gone off. So you should keep doing that. So he said, you know, I keep doing that physically. So whenever I'm going to work, I keep looking in the mirror and I keep checking whether there are any lines of, you know, tiredness or any lines of, um, uh, you know, stress or my face is not happy or I'm not looking enthusiastic. So I keep doing that. So then I said, okay. So he said, that's a practice with me. So I said, is that a practice? So he said, yes. So I said, do you do that while you are back from business also? So while you're going, while you're driving to that place where there's going to be a business still, sure, you're doing that. You're checking your expressions. You're checking your smile, you're checking how you're looking or whether you are sounding enthusiastic or dull or dry, all that you're doing, fine. But then when you're coming back, are you doing the same thing? When you're going back to your family, are you doing the same thing? Or when you're going back to your room in your personal space, you know, even away from the family, are you doing that? So I said, no. <laughs> So I said, that's why, you see, you're doing that for money. So when you are focused on the earning, then you're checking your face also. Because you need to look interested and enthusiastic and available for that business to happen, the deal to go good. But then when you're coming back, you are not. So it's not a spiritual act that you're doing. It's a very businessman kind of a thing. <laughs> so don't tell me that you are in awareness. You are not in awareness of your state. You are in awareness of the business. So that's very body conscious. And then he understood the difference between, you know, being spiritually aware and checking your state of peace and happiness because of the awareness of your business. 
And then Baba says, make spirituality your business. <laughs> so you should always be interested in your state of peace, happiness, and love and purity. And you should always understand that I should be in yoga with Baba and take what Baba is giving and share it with others. And in doing that, in being happy, in being peaceful, in taking it from Baba and incorporating it in every word, every act, I am earning. I am earning a spiritual income. So that's the kind of awareness I have to build. And then Baba says, I am the ocean of treasures. So when you take from me and give, that's not even karma. That's an open account. <laughs> because it doesn't require any effort. You benefit in that. The other benefits in that. There is so much of good wishes, good feelings so much of blessings involved in that whole act that you don't even call it a karmic account because there is no burden whatsoever. You do it in a very light state. And then Baba today, what Baba is saying about taking and giving. So, you know, usually when we come to Gyan and we understand that you have to be a giver, what we start doing is we start giving without taking. So there was this one sister and she once shared that, you know, Didi, when I begin the day, I am very generous hearted and I only give, give and give. And I'm always smiling, always loveful, helpful, cooperative, tolerant, you know, um, supportive in every act, when I'm at home, to my children, to the family, when I go to office, to my colleagues, on the way, everyone I meet. But you know what, they, they, they don't reciprocate. So you're giving and then you're giving, 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 and then there is no reciprocation. And then what happens at the end of the day, when I come back home and it's 8 o'clock, 8.30, and this has been my issue for a while. So I'm sharing it with you. She told me that, you know, by the time it's 8, 8.30, there is this one thought that comes to me every day, which is, will I only keep giving or somebody will give me also? And then my last thought of the day is, nobody reciprocated. Nobody even asked me a glass of water. <laughs> and I have been giving, giving, giving all day. <laughs> and then with this thought, I sleep every day. And I struggle, Didi, for this giving, I'm struggling. And then I told her, you see, you are, so you understand that without taking, giving will become burdensome. But what you don't understand is you are expecting to take from in the wrong place. So you think the reciprocation has to come from the one you're giving to. But no, the, the source is the bestower. You don't have to give and wait for reciprocation. You have to take and give. It's not give and take. Take and give. Yes? So will we follow this mantra? Take and give, not give and take. Because give and take is a very big problem. When you give and take, you're only waiting. You're not able to take. And nobody is giving in return. So Baba says, first take and then give. So you must remember Baba. And first thing in the first early morning, first thing we do is we fill our apron. We fill our apron so much that we are able to give all day. And then while going about the day also, stay in awareness that Baba is continuously filling my apron, refilling my apron with love, with peace, with happiness. 
and everything that I'm doing is from a very full place. I'm not giving because I wish to take. And this take and give will solve all the problems of our life. So this is Baba's blessing today. Don't give and take, take and give. And then, and this is all a question of awareness. So Baba is giving endlessly, bountifully, but then we are not in awareness that Baba is giving me. So sometimes again, you know, ego, ego that comes in between me and Baba, ego gives me the illusion that I'm giving only. But when I'm egoless, I can see that I'm taking from Baba much more than I'm giving. So this is what Baba is talking about in the blessing. And then in the Murli, Baba is talking about becoming pure. And Baba says that if you want to become pure, you must pay attention to study and become free from attachment. Now, what I want to talk about today is that, you know, this study, study has four subjects. Our study of Raj Yoga has four subjects, knowledge, yoga, dharana, which is lifestyle changes, and then there is seva. And so I will today only talk about the importance of knowledge for purity. So Baba says that you going to Satyu, you becoming pure, is all related to these four subjects, knowledge, yoga, and dharana, and lifestyle changes, and seva is the foundation of becoming pure. Now, in the light of today's Murli, we will try to understand the importance of knowledge in becoming pure. Now, the first thing is, without knowledge, there is no understanding of purity. So what is pure? What is a pure world like? What is pure thought? What is pure life? We don't understand that without knowledge. So until and unless I pay good attention to the murli, I don't have any idea about purity or the bestower of purity. Now you see that Baba is today in the Murli saying that people think that God is the one who is moving the leaves. Pata pata Bhagwan ki marsi se hilta hai. And Baba says, it is not me, it is the breeze doing that. <laughs> and Baba says that I am giving you my introduction that I am the purifier. Yes, so you don't have to. So when we connect with Baba, based on this knowledge, that Baba is the purifier, then I use my time and thought to sit with Baba and take the power of purity from him. Yes, now let's say I do not know that a certain person sells air conditioners. I do not know that. Then will I take the time to call him or, you know, talk to him about air conditioners? No, because until I know, don't know what they do, I will not spend the time and thought and energy to connect with that person in that way. Similarly, Baba says, 
until and unless you have knowledge about what I do and what I don't do, you will be unnecessarily wasting your time and thought and energy in connecting to me for things that I don't do. So Baba says that people have been calling out to me for several years. It's been 2,500 years. Souls have called out to me. But they are all calling out to me for the wrong thing. So you're praying, you're spending your time, thought, energy. But what is in the heart of those who are doing that? That God needs to come and change the situation. And everybody is connecting with Baba in that way. And that Baba doesn't do. That's not his department. Yes, so, so, you know, there is this one sister and every time she comes and she sits before me and she looks at me longingly and lovingly and she says, Didi, do something about my condition, please. I'm not well, I'm not feeling well, I'm not in good spirits. Didi, please do something about my condition. And I really love her genuinely. And I tell her that... I love you and I have that interest that your condition should be better. But I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. You have to do something about it. You have to come to class. And she doesn't come to class. She doesn't come to class at all. And every time, once in a month, she would come and she would cry and she would plead and beg. And, and I feel so... You know, I, I, I understand that feeling of helplessness that, you know, you cannot do what you cannot do. That's not your department. <laughs> I do not have the power to move her from a place of sorrow to happiness. Only she has the power to do that if she understands Baba and if she connects with Baba and if she takes on what Baba is saying, if she starts following Srimad. So Baba says, I also cannot help you if you do not follow Srimad. And I do not change the situation. I am the creator, liberator, guide, director. But you have to understand what I do. So I create heaven. I give knowledge for that. I teach you yoga for that. I give you the knowledge of the beginning, middle and end. I tell you what the golden age was like and what are the possibilities of the soul. I give you the knowledge that you can come to the soul world, sit before me. And if you hold in your awareness that I am the purifier and I, you are being purified, you will be purified by me. And Baba says the time to do that is Amritvela. So first thing is the knowledge about Baba as the purifier, Baba as the liberator, Baba as the bestower of happiness. But then that has to be understood. People say that God gives happiness. But what do they mean by happiness? So they mean by happiness is that, you know, they, you have money and you have uh, whatever you do turns into gold. So that is not happiness. Yes, Baba says, if there is untimely death in the world, then even if you are the richest person on earth, you cannot live your life fearlessly. And that's not happiness. Yes, people who have seen deaths during COVID, you know, the death of a family member, a loved one, they have not recovered from that trauma. And even if you have all the money in the world, if you are in a world where there is sudden untimely death, you cannot be happy. You will always live your life in fear. So Baba says, this, when I say happiness, happiness means going to a world where these things don't exist. There is no body consciousness. There is no death. 
And Baba says, the method to do that is not what you think, you know, just praying, begging. That's not how you reach there. You have to follow Srimad. You have to read the Murli every day, understand, churn on it. You have to wake up at Amritvela, take power from Baba, take purity from Baba, take peace from Baba. You have to do away with your bad habits. Your lifestyle has to change according to Srimad. Impure food, impure lifestyle, the the ways in which lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed has penetrated into our lifestyle has to change. So, you know, there is a lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed have a way of finding themselves into our life. So they have made a way into our life through belief systems, through, uh, you know, cultures, through day-to-day -day living. So Baba says, you have to change all of that, the way you see, the way you eat, the way you engage in relationships, all that, all that has to shift. And then there is seva because wherever our money goes, our heart goes there. So if you're not doing any seva, even if it is only financial, there is very little scope that your heart will be with Baba. So Baba says that these things you have to understand. And for that, you need the murli. And knowledge is the first step to becoming pure, becoming the master of heaven. And in today's murli, Baba says many beautiful revelations about the soul, the soul world, about Baba. And I would discuss some of that so that we understand that, you know, Baba is opening our window to that world which we don't understand at all. And until and unless it comes into our awareness, how can it come into our action? So, you know, you have to understand something in order to become an embodiment of it. So if we don't understand what Satyug is like, if I don't understand the truth about the soul and the body, how can I become soul conscious? How can I become Satyugi? If I don't understand who really Baba is, how can I connect in yoga with Baba? So today, Baba in the Murli says that, you know, the soul is separate from the body. And when you sleep, that's one um, that's one activity, a very mundane activity in which you can understand that it is possible for the soul to separate from the body. And today Baba says that when a soul is separate from the body, he is not able to say anything. At night, it is as though each soul separates from his body. The soul says, I've been working through this body and I'm now tired, so I'm going to rest. The soul and body are two distinct things. And you see that when you sleep, what do you do? You just say enough is enough, now I'm sleeping. Yes, <laughs> there is. And you see, there is, even after you go to bed, there is a certain time frame until which your thoughts don't settle down. Yes, and then you make a decision. Sleep is always a decision. So when you look at the clock and it is 10, 10, 15, 10, 30, and according to your morality, yes? So if you think 10 is late enough, then at 10, you make that decision. If you think 10.30 is late enough, you make that decision at 10.30. If you think 3 a.m. is late enough, then you make that decision to sleep at 3 a.m. So there was this one brother and he's a youth and he came to the center and told me that every day I sleep at 3 and I'm not able to sleep earlier than that. So I said, but how is it that you're regularly able to sleep at three? Because you have programmed yourself that three is late enough. 
Yes, 3 a.m. is late enough. And then what are you doing until then? You're watching video games, you're doing this, that, and the other. But then inside the programming is that when it's 3 a.m., it is late enough and I have to sleep. And that's when you allow yourself to sleep and you sleep. So Baba says, it's always the soul telling itself, now I am tired, now it's enough is enough. You make that decision and you sleep. And when you make that decision, what happens is you disconnect yourself from the body and from the physical world. And then you see in sleep, even if there is a lot of noise outside or somebody's coming and telling you something or there is movement outside, you don't care, you are not aware of it. So Baba says that when I tell you to practice being bodiless, it's about that decision that you have to make. So, you know, when you sit and you tell yourself that I'm a soul, and for some moments, I would like to excuse myself from this physical world and just be in my peace, in my peaceful world. So when you just make that decision, then you are able to disconnect yourself from the body and the physical world and be in your peace, be with Baba who is the ocean of peace. So Baba says, the soul and the body are two separate things, two distinct things. And the soul has the power to make the decision whether to be in the awareness of the body or not be in the awareness of the body. And if you really look at this example, then meditation is not something that anybody can say, I can't do. Because if you can sleep, you can also meditate. Yes, it's just that you have been sleeping for a long time, so you're doing it very unconsciously. But now that you understand the process, it's all about making that decision that now I don't care about the body and the old world for some time. I just want to be in my peace and be with Baba and be in the soul world. And so meditation is not something that you have to strive for or make effort for. It is very easy, very natural. So this is something that Baba tells about today. So you see, knowledge is the key because if we don't have knowledge, we can't do whatever Baba is saying. So murli, importance of murli and importance of Listening to the murli with that relevance, you know, with that kind of value in your heart, that murli has so much value. And with that buddhi, you know, with that attitude, when you listen to the murli, you will figure out treasures in the murli. So you will figure out that Baba has given me so many keys and so many insights in the murli today. And then Baba says that, in the in Satyug, Baba mentions three things at least about Satyug today. First thing Baba says is there is no pain in the womb because the karmic settlement has already happened here. So there is no punishment in the womb that the soul receives in Satyug. And Baba says that here, each soul experiences punishment in the jail of a womb. There is no jail in the golden age. There is no sin there because there is no Ravan. And this is why a womb there is called a palace. And this is why they show Krishna floating on a people leaf. Yes. And then Baba today says that when children are born, they don't cry. In Satya, when children are born, they don't cry. Baba says that children take birth at their accurate time. There is no difficulty at all. And there is no sound of crying. And here what happens is, here they have to operate in order to deliver five or seven children at the same time. 
<laughs> so Baba says, you don't have these problems in Satyug that, you know, you have to operate. And these days, you know, people don't deliver normally. And then there is so much of pain and operation and this and that. So Baba says, there is no pain in the, uh, there is no punishment in the womb. There is no pain in childbirth. And the child also doesn't cry when he comes to the world. So, you know, in Satya, you don't, people say that you come crying and you go crying in Kali But in Satya, you come smiling and you leave smiling also. You know, so when there has to be a child, you, you know, the parents are ready, the child is also ready because they know I'm going to take this new birth and be this new child. So this is such, and you know, knowing Satya, knowing the world of happiness, knowing the details of the world of happiness makes you very happy. So you know, it's such a happy matter to realize that there is no pain in Satya. And Baba says that you want to be happy, you have to know the happy stuff and think about the happy stuff. So all day, you know, you just check this. Every time you think about, you know, birth being without crying and with death being without crying in Satyu, it makes you just happy. It makes your heart dance in joy. And then in the Murli Baba today says that there is no attachment in Satyu. So when there is somebody leaves the body, you don't cry, you don't create a big scene because there is no, there is no uh, attachment. And you see, it is not death. And Baba says there is no word like death and widow in Satyuk. There is no word like death and widow in Satyuk because there is no emotion attached to people leaving bodies and taking bodies. So, you know, it's just a process. You understand that, okay, this is leaving the body. This is taking the body. It doesn't mean somebody got widowed and somebody died. So all these things are not there. And, you know, there is this. Uh, so I think that it's not basically uh, leaving the body, which is the problem, but the way we look at that whole process of leaving the body that causes a lot of pain, because we have connected it to loss. You think that when somebody dies, it's a loss, or you know, when the husband dies, it's a loss of social status. So you know, it's it's the loss of the person that is also a conditioning. And then the loss of social status is a condition. So, you know, even if there was a bad marriage, you still feel sorry for the loss because you lost the social status. And, you know, there was this, um, I will tell you this interesting thing. I don't know whether I should or shouldn't, but I'll still say, you know, there was this one lady and, um, her husband was an alcoholic and he used to beat her like anything. And then he died out of uh, liver issues. And when he died, she cried. And I said, why are you crying? So she said, I became a widow. <laughs> so I said, I don't know whether I should say that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> So you're better off as a widow than you were as a married person. At least nobody's going to beat you. So she said, but Didi, I'm still a widow. So you see that this whole thing, you know, that when somebody is, changes the costume, then you are at loss. Or even when somebody who used to beat you every day is, you know, is changing the costume, then you feel that your social status is compromised. All these things are conditionings which don't exist in Satyuk. So Baba says when somebody leaves the body, they just leave the body. It doesn't mean 
they they die and use experience loss or they experience loss so that whole programming of the experience of loss is not there in sattva so if you start thinking about what baba is saying in the murli then you get a sense of the fact that baba is telling you that the way we look at things in satyug the way we experience the world in satyug is very different and when you get it you also start thinking like that and that is the first step to purity so the first step to purity is knowledge that is why baba says leave the pyre of lust and climb the pyre of knowledge gyan chita par chadh jao okay so om shanti